Hello and welcome to Photo Education Online. I'm Larry Lursey and today we're going to talk about infrared photography. Now, infrared photography is something that can give you a whole different look uh, than your traditional photography and what it generally will do is grass will turn white and trees will take on uh, strange looks and skies will really be contrasty and dark and it's really a cool look. Uh, but there's some tricks to it to, to getting it to work right. You know, in the old days we used to use infrared film and it was really difficult to work with. You had to load the camera in complete darkness and keep the film in the canister all the way to the place to get it developed and it was really difficult working with infrared. And when digital came along there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it but the two of the most popular ways are either through filters or through having your camera converted for infrared. And those are the two options I'm going to talk about today. The first option and this is how I got started doing digital infrared was uh, using a filter and I got this one from Harrison but uh, there's probably other people that make it. It's under a hundred dollars and if you see it it's basically it, it almost looks like a lens cap it's completely black you can barely see through it if you hold it up kind of up in the sky you can see a tiny bit through the filter but it's really really dark and so basically what you have to do is compose your shot get everything set up then you screw this filter on and once it's on you can't see anything through the viewfinder anymore and from there you take a shot and look at the back and you go from there. The downside to it is because it's obviously not letting in nearly as much light. It's so dark. It's fil filtering out the light and what that'll cause you to do is have to have these really long exposures and if you couple that with a you know F16, F22 to give you a really deep depth of field you start combining those things together and it's going to be some long exposures which you know if it's a very still landscape maybe that's not a big deal but a lot of times that starts leading to noise and things like that so what I found I was doing when I was using the filter route was uh, starting to back off on the f-stop maybe shooting stuff at f8 and sacrificing a little bit of the depth of field but in order not to have you know a 70 second exposure or something like that so the uh, inexpensive way to go is with the filter, but at, if you try it for a while, I think you will probably decide that uh, it's, it's not right for you, that it's, it's just it's too hard to use. I would actually recommend that you go the other route, which is getting a camera converted for infrared. And what I did is I bought this online. I think I got it used. It's a Nikon D70, so it's kind of an in-between camera. It's not a point and shoot but it's certainly not a pro camera but it does a good enough job that I can get some nice images with it and you basically send off your camera to I think I used a company called LifePixel but there's probably some others out there if you just look up digital infrared conversion you can actually do it yourself but that's kind of risky and you have a chance of ruining your camera so I didn't want to try that with mine so I sent it off it's kind of expensive I mean it's cost a few hundred dollars to get it done but once you do your camera is pretty much a permanent infrared camera. You can't do any regular photography with it because they've modified the filter inside the camera. But the plus side is now it operates just like a regular camera and so when you go out and um, you're setting your exposures you can meter and do all that type stuff you would normally do and compose through the through the camera and much easier to use and so it's a kind of a it's a trade-off but it's a little more expensive to do but once you get that camera converted to it and you can start using you can even hand hold it because um, if you've got the the right lighting and there's enough light there you can hand hold that camera but it, it's a nice option you can go either way but if you haven't tried infrared photography I hope you look into it because it's a great way to add a new type of look to your photography portfolio so Check it out, and if you have any questions, be sure and let me know, and be sure to check back for more tutorials later. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.